and this one. If you will recall, in the Gospel, Jesus is sitting down and eating with Matthew, who is a tax collector, a publican, probably the most hated person in the community. Even worse than our own IRS, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he's also eating with others who are, co- who are known to everyone else in the town as sinners. He's eating with them. And he's challenged by those who consider themselves to be righteous, who consider to be the equivalent of the church goers of that day, saying, why is your master eating with these public and sinners? Why? And Jesus' response is so important. He said, though he came to heal the sick, and those who are righteous, those who are well, have no need of a physician. He came to save not the righteous, they have no need of them, but those who are spiritually ill. For the last two weeks, thanks to the Supreme Court, my email box has been filled with the righteous (laughs) outpouring of some amazing people. (laughs) (laughs) And I must tell you, this is exactly the gospel passage that came to mind. The church is not the place for those righteous people who condemn everyone else. And I think it's one of our problems with Orthodox Christians because, you know, we we tell you, you have to fast, just prepare for the reason, you have to do this, you have to do that, and there's 40 days fast. And and we have the illusion that we are somehow, because we've done these things, that we are somehow righteous and worthy. And I'm here to tell you this morning, if you are righteous and worthy, then you are unworthy. Because Christ didn't come for you. Christ came for the broken. Christ came for those who need him. What can God do with someone who is so full of himself that there's not even room for God in his heart? Our church is the church of the alcoholics. It's the church of the drug, the drug addicted. It's the church of the adulterers. It's the church of the homosexuals. It's the church of all of those in, in, of humankind, the sons and daughters of Adam, who suffer from some sinful passion. It's the place where they come to be healed, to be given the grace of God to become something greater than they are. And I think one of our problems when we look at others, and of course never ourselves, (laughs) we always like to equate them with their sin. This man is a thief. This man is an adulterer. This woman is a gossip. A very wise priest once told me, we are not our sins. We are not our sins. We are something greater. Our sins are something that can be taken away from us and shed like a, like a snake sheds its skin. And like that snake has new skin, it shows we can become new people. It's possible for everyone to repent. And to repent means simply to change. To go around, to turn around and go the opposite direction. So lest we become tempted to think that we are somehow better than others because we're in church on Sunday, or because we went up that winding road here to Fort Ross this morning on on a a holiday and we we could have stayed home and slept in bed. But we didn't. We did the righteous thing and we came to Fort Ross for the Divine Liturgy. And we fasted, maybe. Unless we think that that makes us better than anyone else, let us remember this Gospel. That Christ came not to (coughs) save the righteous, but sinners. In the other interesting passage in here, which I I think is important just to think about, you know, when, when the temple was destroyed in Jerusalem, there was a crisis in Judaism. How could the Jewish nation worship God without sacrifices? Without the sacrifices that were commanded by the law of Moses. 
There's no more temple. No more, no more holy place. And the rabbis picked this verse that Christ, Christ quotes. That God desires mercy rather than sacrifice. From Isaiah. And so modern rabbinical Judaism has as its core, as, as the center of its life, not the sacrifice of animals, but the sacrificial giving of oneself to another. What's called in, 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 in Jewish, Jewish in, in Hebrew, a mitzvah. You do a good thing. And it's something we Christians can also hear. God desires from us that we do good to our neighbor as God does good to us. He doesn't desire us to be angry. He doesn't us to be de desire us to be righteous, to be vengeful. None of that says. He asks us to be merciful, <coughs> be kind and generous. That's the sacrifice that God gladly accepts from our hands. So as we give thanks to God on this day for this nation in which we live, a nation in which people are free to believe and to do all sorts of things. We give thanks to God for the freedom to be Orthodox Christians, to worship in the way that the Holy Fathers have taught us to worship, to worship as the Holy Apostles have taught us to worship, and the freedom not to judge others. Amen. 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 <coughs>